How's it going, Knicks fans? Welcome back to another episode of Fireside Knicks. I'm your host, Dylan Becker, and I'm joined by my brother and co-host, Justin Becker. And tonight, the vibes are not very good. The New York Knicks snapped their three-game winning streak by losing on the road to the Minnesota Timberwolves by a score of 117 to 100. Now, the Minnesota Timberwolves are a very, very good team. They are now the number one seed in the Western Conference. So this was going to be a tough game from the start. We knew it, but it's unfortunate that they couldn't you know, end the road trip with a W, but... It is what it is. They're now eight and six on the season. But, you know, I'm not going to delay it any further. I'm just going to pass it off to Justin here. He's going to give us his game recap and, of course, his biggest takeaways from what was really a frustrating loss for the Knicks. Yeah, you know, the the road trip is over. The winning streak is over. Um, the Knicks kind of just got manhandled in this one. They, they were actually in this game, you know, for most of the first half. You, you feel like the Knicks didn't play all that great in the first half, but they still were in the game. I believe it was only like a two-point game at halftime or anything. You felt like maybe the Knicks could sneak a win somehow out of a, a messy performance in the first half, but the third quarter of doom struck us once again. That's something that we've seen, you know, time and time again, really throughout the entire Tom Thibodeau era is the third quarter of doom. And tonight, the Knicks were bit really hard by the third quarter of Doom. That third quarter was just an absolute mess. The the lead for the Timberwolves basically went up to like 21 points or something like that. The Knicks were never able to overcome that. They lost this game by 17. Um, They shot horrible as a team in this one. 34% from the field, 23% from three. Just no one could get it going really. Other than Jalen Brunson, really, that's really the only positive offensive performance for the Knicks. You know, he... He had 25 on seven of 15 efficiencies, three for six from the, um, from three, I should say. You know, that's just – that's really what Jalen Brunson does. He's our best player for a reason. So, obviously, he didn't have a cold night, but the rest of the team did. I feel like the only reason Brunson didn't have a cold night was because the guy who was going to be guarding him, uh, Jaden McDaniels, got injured in the first quarter. So, you know, once that happened, uh, you know, Brunson was pretty much in for a pretty productive night, but – no one else could really get anything going. Randall was six for 16 from the field, 21 points up. Uh, Barrett struggled again, you know, just 22 minutes, by the way, for RJ. He only shot four for 13. He did make three or four for, of his threes, but, you know, four for 13, not very productive. Um, Something that I do want to talk about, though, Quentin Grimes was scoreless in this one. He was 0 for 6 from the field, and all of his attempts were threes, so obviously he's 0 for 6 from 3. Um, you know, we just saw what Dante DiVincenzo did when he was in the starting lineup in place of Grimes. And, you know, obviously it made us question maybe if DiVincenzo should start permanently over Grimes. I even wrote an article about it on EmpireSportsMedia.com. Um, yeah, just 25 minutes for Grimes and he didn't score. I mean, I don't know, just his the look out there when he's with the starters is not great. The optics are not great. Obviously, the offense seems to flow a lot better with DiVincenzo as we saw when he started in place of Grimes in those two games, you know, just he's more active. He's cutting more. He, I feel like he's a better off ball player. Um, Yeah. I'm kind of disappointed in Grimes right now. You know, I, I don't want to, I was always kind of denying the whole, you know, Oh, he's regressed type thing that was kind of floating around or the, you know, Oh, he doesn't fit with the starters. This at that, but you know, now I'm, I'm really starting to see it because you know, it's just empty night after empty night after empty night with Grimes, you know, and, you know, you can say, oh, but his defense, but his defense. Yeah, sure. But Anthony Edwards just went crazy in the second half for the Timberwolves. He ended this game with 23 points. I believe he only had four at halftime. And a big reason for that was because Quentin Grimes was guarding him. So, you know, at, at that point, he was just an absolute negative today on both sides of the floor. I mean, obviously, one game does not dictate who you are as a player or anything. But, you know, this has kind of been a conversation that's been kind of been having, you know, been had all season so far. You know, obviously it's only been 14 games, but at the same time, it's 14 games. Start showing me something, Quentin. You know what I mean? So I, I don't I don't know what the what the Knicks should do about that. I don't think it's really time to bench him completely. You know, obviously they're not gonna like do what they did with Evan Fournier where they completely took him out of the rotation. But you know, I'm not I'm not sure if now is the time to you know, slide him back to the second unit and slide Dante DiVincenzo into the first unit. I'm not sure if that's the time, but, you know, it definitely makes the conversation a little more interesting, especially considering he's putting up this performance immediately after Dante DiVincenzo just had a career game starting in his spot. So obviously the opponent, you know, does matter. They played the Timberwolves tonight, who are the one seed in the West, like you said, and they played the Charlotte Hornets before this. So, you know, obviously that does matter. The context does matter, but, you know, just... 
the general optics have not been good. He's not passing the eye test either. I can look at the box score all I want and say, oh, he went 0 for 6 and he didn't score. That's bad in itself. But if you watch the game, you can see, it. you know, he's just, he's not very involved with the starters. The touches that he does get, he hesitates. He's not, you know, he's not ready to shoot. I just, I don't know. I'm very disappointed because, you know, we, we saw all off season long. He was working out with JJ Redick, all this and that. We were hearing a lot of great things from him. You know, we were kind of expecting him to kind of break out and continue to grow off of what he did last season. And I'm not seeing that. It looks like he's taking a step back, which is unfortunate to see. I, I don't know if, I really don't know how to fix it. Maybe moving him to the second unit would fix it, but and just you know, one more thing I want to say about his shooting. Obviously, I know his numbers are not like confident when Quentin Grimes puts up a three confident in Jalen Brunson or RJ Barrett and even Julius Randle when these guys shoot threes. I feel a lot more confident that they're going to drop when Quentin Grimes shoots a three. Uh oh, is is he going to make it? You know what I mean? Like I kind of shooting, considering that's like what he specializes in point shot than I am. I don't know if that's just a me thing or if other Knicks fans feel the same way. But yeah, you know, other than that, I really don't have anything else to add. I'm just so I'm just a little dis- disappointed in in uh in what I saw today, and I'm really disappointed in Quentin. Yeah, you know, and I just wanted to throw this in there too, just as a little factoid from the night, but Dante DiVincenzo was the only player with a positive plus minus tonight. Now, I know plus minus is a very, you know, team-oriented stat, so if you lose by 20 points, everyone's going to be in the negatives, but considering what the, you know, the context of what we just described here, DiVincenzo being the only positive plus minus and Quentin Grimes had the worst plus minus with a negative 18 on the night, I mean, you know, it's just another thing to throw in there because it is a you know conversation that now we are having of whether or not they should relegate Grimes to the second unit. And me personally, I think they should. I you know we discussed this in our our previous video, but we think I personally think that Grimes will play better with the second unit. I think he'll get more shot opportunities, which can help him get into a rhythm. I think he fits the play style more of quickly and heart, like you said in the last episode, and I also agree with that. I think he just fits better with the second unit than he does with the starters because you know when he's playing with the starters, oftentimes if he gets the ball and he it's not for an open spot up three. He just passes it right back to the guy that gave it to him. It's really all he does on offense. And it's kind of a shame because we've seen Quentin Grimes in previous years, like such as last year, for example, kind of be a little bit more dynamic offensively. You know, he was able, he had some moments where he was a finishing pretty well, where he was making some good passes, you know, along with the shooting, of course. And now where I'm not really seeing anything, I'm not even seeing the shooting. You know, I know at one point he was shooting 40% from three. And I know, yes, also, this is the first game back from an injury that he played in this one. I understand that. But this isn't like a one game thing. Quentin Grimes has kind of been kind of a non-factor all season long. And that's a problem. You know, that he's had a couple games where, you know, he shot well, got a little bit more involved in the offense, but then kind of just phased right out of it again after, you know, a certain spurt of plays. And then you didn't really see him again. And then tonight. You didn't see him at all. He was nowhere to be found. I mean, zero points through, what was it, 24 minutes of action? That's just inexcusable. That's, 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 you can't really excuse that at all whatsoever. It doesn't matter, you know, the circumstance of, oh, he came off an injury or, oh, this, that. No, zero points in 24 minutes is unacceptable, flat out unacceptable. And going 0 for 6 from 3 when we're depending on you to shoot threes is also unacceptable because when you're not hitting your threes, what exactly are you out there for then? Because that's the whole whole reason Quentin Grimes is out there with the starters you know as of course as a defense you know I should I should at least acknowledge that he's out there with the starters for the defense but offensively it's to you know provide spacing one of the biggest issues the Knicks had last season was spacing the big hope was that Quentin Grimes could take a big leap and enhance that spacing with some shooting and of course with the addition of DiVincenzo DiVincenzo has shown that you know he's shot the ball very well this season had some big games the two games he started he played very very well Obviously, tonight, DiVincenzo wasn't fantastic. He was two for eight from the field, but he did have a positive plus minus, like I said. So clearly, he was impactful in some regard. Quentin Grimes, on the other hand, was just a non-factor. And that's that's disappointing. I'm just, I'm just, I guess that's a good way to put it. You know, you said it best. I'm just disappointed. You know, losing to the Timberwolves, I can, I can handle. Because like I mentioned in the Open, Timberwolves are a very good team. Now the number one seed in the West, the best defense in the NBA. Very, very good team. You know, they may maybe they're legit this year. Maybe they're not. We still got a little bit more time to figure out if they really are legit, but they're a good team. You know, they're a playoff team. They made the playoffs last season. They're not a bad team. But the New York Knicks, if they they kind of just shot themselves out of this one. They really did. You know, they were depending on shooting a lot and it went horribly wrong. 34% from the field, 23 from three. And as I alluded to, Quentin Grimes. 
Grimes going 0 for 6 from 3. Julius Randle, 1 for 6 from 3. Emmanuel quickly, 1 for 7 from 3. DiVincenzo even was bad from 3, 1 for 6. Even though I just talked good about him, I got to acknowledge that he did not play very well tonight offensively. It's a tough defensive team that they played against. I understand it, but it's these bad shooting games that I'm sick of seeing. You know, during the win streak, they were shooting the ball very well. They were shooting, they were hitting it efficiently, both in the two point range and in the three point range, especially in the three point range. They were shooting, like, I think, like 43% from three in that three game win streak. Tonight, they just laid an egg. They just laid an absolute egg offensively, and it was very disappointing to see. I, I'm personally a little bit upset because I'm kind of getting sick of seeing these stretches where they have great sh- shooting games and then go right back to looking like they can't hit anything, looking like there's a lid on the rim. It's frustrating. It's honestly frustrating. And, you know, I, I really hope that they take this next week or so because they don't play again until friday the day after thanksgiving and it's against the miami heat so it's a playoff rematch i really hope that they take this time over the next few days to kind of you know regroup a little bit and kind of get that shot to fall i don't know what's going on but they need to practice a lot of shooting they really do because it's abysmal watching these guys try to take so many threes or so many contested shots and it's it's frustrating i want to see these guys hit their shots it's the only way we can win games at this stage you know in today's nba where so many offenses you know teams other teams offenses i'm alluding to here are so dynamic and diverse can score at all three levels the new york knicks need to be better at what they're doing they need to be better at this they have to you know performances like this are just inexcusable i don't really have much else to add other than that you know i'm gonna pass it back off to justin you know if he's got anything else he wants to add any other takeaways and kind of just preview a little bit of what's ahead because it doesn't really get easier from here for the Knicks. And they really need to bounce back from this. Yeah. You know, I kind of just wanted to talk about your, your three point shooting little rant there. You know, I, I kind of think you're overreacting just a little bit. The Knicks are not a bad three point shooting team by any regard entering today. They were sixth in the NBA in three point percentage at 38.1. So they are a good three point shooting team tonight was just a, a, an awful showing really tonight was just something that we really have not seen in, you know, a couple of weeks, you know, obviously they started the year off shooting pretty rough, but then they found their stride and they started to hit their shots. So I don't think the Knicks are a bad three point shooting team by any means. I think today was just an off night. It was the final game of a road trip, a really tough road trip, a successful road trip at that too, you know, playing against a tough team on the road. You know, like you said, one of the best teams in the NBA, they're the top seed in the West. This is not some, this is not the Charlotte Hornets or the Washington Wizards. So, you know, this was going to be a lot more difficult, you know, but I, I'm not going to overreact too much to this one. It was It's a tough game. You're not going to win many games shooting 34% from the field and 20-something percent from three. You're not going to win a whole lot of games doing that. So, you know, hopefully that they, they come into the Garden on Friday and they beat the Heat. Obviously, this is a playoff matchup, a playoff uh, rematch, I should say. This is a playoff rematch from last year where the Heat did get the best of the Knicks. Um, you know, Obviously, we say a lot of things about the Heat off camera, me and you, because we live in South Florida. We say, you know, oh, the Heat stink, this, that, that. The Heat aren't that good. The Heat got worse. Uh, the Heat are no joke. You know, they have two so they have two stars in Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo. That whole team buys into what they do. Um, they always just find a way. So, you know, it, it's not a joke of a team. They've won, I believe, like eight of nine, seven of eight, something like that. Did they win today? Uh, let me check real quick to see if they won today. They did. So they've, they're have they coming into the, the garden, you know, possibly, you know, with nine of 10, something like that. I don't know if they play again until Friday. I'm not going to check. But as of right now, they've won eight of nine. They just railed off seven in a row. They lost to the Bulls the other day. They just beat the Bulls again today. They beat them by 18 points I'm looking at. So, you know, this is a very good basketball team right now. That, that team is is rolling. You know, obviously the Knicks are rolling too until tonight. But you know, that should be a very good test. The Knicks failed the test tonight, you know, but like I said, one test does not, you know, make your whole season, thankfully, like as if, you know, kind of like in school, one test does not, you know, determine your whole grade. So, you know, tonight, one test does not determine your whole season. So hopefully on Friday, they bounce back and they pass that test. And we're talking about a win instead of another disappointing loss. Yeah, you know, usually I'm the one that's being all positive, you know, it's kind of a shock that we've kind of flipped roles this time, you know, you were a little bit more positive on the outlook of this one than I was but you know anyways with that being said I mean in terms of the overreacting comment you you said about it you know I mean maybe I was overreacting a little bit because I will admit that you know they they have been shooting good from three overall this season as you said they were six in the NBA and they had a very good stretch from, from beyond the arc during their winning streak but I, I don't know I feel like I've seen too many times this year already where they've had games where they just laid an absolute egg from three point where they're just missing everything and not a single thing is falling you know obviously teams are gonna have games like that during a season you know I'm not you know stupid here <laughs> obviously I know it's a long season and all that but 
I don't know. I feel like I've seen it too many times through the first 14 games, and I don't I, like more times than I really want to see it. You know, I'm sure a lot of Knicks fans can agree with it. Maybe it's an overreaction, but I don't know. I feel like they really, really got to touch on shooting because I feel like it's not consistent enough. Obviously, offense is going to happen, but I don't know. I, I see too much up and down with the shooting this season so far. Even when they have the little good stretch, I'm, it's still too much up and down for me. I want to see some more consistency. And that goes for a lot of players, you know. And I really think that, you know, to tie back to the Quentin Grimes thing, I really think it's time for them to, to do something about it. Yes, I know 14 games in sounds like it's too early, but, you know, at the end of the day, I, I, I really think you got to do something. I think you got to do something. Now, I, I'm not saying, like you said, you know, I agree with this point. Don't give Grimes the Fournier treatment and just completely boot him out. It's not that to the point where I think they need to do that. But I do think that they need to switch him with DiVincenzo in the rotation. I really do. I think DiVincenzo earns more minutes. I think he plays better with the starters. I think it'll benefit everybody. I really don't see how it'll be a bad thing if you do it. I think it'll benefit Grimes. I think it'll benefit DiVincenzo. It'll benefit the Knicks. I think you hit three things right there that'll make you a much better team than you were before. Now, do I think it'll be the worst thing in the world if they don't do it? No, I don't. I think the Knicks can still play very well, even if Grimes stays in the starting five. But personally, I think for the better of the team, it's better if they switch it. But, you know, who knows what they're going to do about that. But, guys, thank you so much for tuning into this episode. This was a very frustrating loss, but it is what it is. You know, they have a couple days off before they play their next game. Thank you guys so much again, though, for tuning into this episode. We really appreciate appreciate your guys' support. You can follow us on all of our social media platforms. We're on X, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, of course, this YouTube page you're watching the video on. The audio versions of these podcasts are on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Make sure you give us a five-star rating on those. And we'll see you guys in the next episode of Fireside Next. Peace out.